Hi everyone, it's Roger here from whatsondisneyplus.com with this week's Q&A video. Now all of these questions have come from our Patreons and YouTube channel members, which you can become from as little as $2 a month and you get to ask the questions. You also get early access to some of our retro reviews. You also get access to other stuff a little bit earlier and at a certain level as well, you also get your name at the end of every video and a shout out on the weekly podcast. So let's jump into the first question. Gavin asked on Patreon, when do you think more information on Disney Plus Star will be released? And to tie in with that, Joseph also asked, with Star literally a month away, do you think there'll be any more added to that launch than what they've shown? And also could Star get a premium access stuff, for example, Death on the Nile and Free Guy, as the UK cinemas are still recovering. So I've merged both of these questions together because they're kind of connected. So first off, with regards to what Star is, in case you aren't familiar, it's gonna be a brand new sixth tier that's going to be added to Disney Plus on February the 23rd. It's going to be available in Canada. It'll be available in the UK, across Europe, um, in New Zealand, Australia, and also in Singapore, which is getting Disney Plus that day. It's going to be a sixth brand, you know, where you've got Disney, National uh, Geographic, Star Wars, Marvel, Pixar. You're going to have Star, and in there you're going to have content from Searchlight, you're going to have 20th Century Studios, ABC, FX, also going to be some local content as well for individual countries. And it's all kind of part of this big expansion that Disney Plus is going for. It's going to cost like $2 or more, um, depending on where you are, like two euros or two pounds, whichever which they're doing it. Now, so far in Europe, we've only seen like a little small little trailer for about 30 seconds confirming shows like 24 Lost and also Family Guy. Also had a number of star originals confirmed, including Hellstrom, uh, Love Victor, and also Big Sky. Now, they've only really announced a little bit, and they've said that there's going to be 450 titles available at launch, and they've maybe announced two dozen, so there's a lot more to come. I think Disney have been holding back on doing too much promotion for a couple of reasons. First off, WandaVision. Uh, there's a big show. They don't want to take any attention away from that. They don't want people holding off on getting Disney+. Plus. Um, and they kind of don't really make too much noise around one division in January. That was that's my first thing. I think we're going to get into February, and then we will start seeing some more stuff. I wouldn't even be at all surprised if it starts this week with it just being a month ago, and they're going to just start drip feeding out with 450 titles. They can just keep going. Well, this is coming, and this is coming, and this is coming, and this is coming, and there's going to be like over a thousand titles by the end of the year. So they've got a lot to add. There was another issue as well, for example, here in the UK and across Europe, where we actually had Star TV, um, which has been rebranded this past week. Um, so they might have wanted to get that out of the way so there's no confusion when people are clicking through the TV garden. I mean, it's just one of the things. They might have just wanted to wait and get that out of the way. I think the main reason generally is WandaVision. As far as releasing movies on Premier Access through Star, I don't think they're going to want to do that yet. I don't think they're anywhere near it. I think, I think, to be honest, those 20th century studio movies are kind of going to be the ones they throw out to the cinemas to see how what the engagement is, kind of use them as the test ones rather than sending out their billion dollar franchises. Just keep pushing them back because um, there's no real reason not to. If the cinemas aren't open, doesn't look like over here in the UK. I mean, I'd be very surprised if cinemas are open much before May, maybe even June because of the current situation over here. And that's going to be the same pretty much right across Europe. Um, and then again, other areas are all having difficulty. So then we might see um, split releases. I don't know, it's very difficult, but right now I can just see them delaying those kind of movies. Um, I think we're gonna see a lot more stuff coming, lots more announcements, loads more things being revealed, but also they haven't even started promoting it in Canada or Australia anything yet so there's still a lot way to go and I think we're really gonna kick into that maybe once we get as I said past today or it'll be into February but very soon I'm sure we'll start having a lot more information about what's coming on I was also asked about whether or not uh, star originals are gonna be coming weekly or all at once in a binge mode I did ask um, my contact at Disney and I did get a reply back stating that they haven't yet announced anything yet so I expect that information will be coming later I personally wouldn't be at all surprised if some of them come as a big drop because they've already been available in other areas I mean Love Victor did drop on Hulu all at once they might want to go down that line if they've got enough series this year they can keep doing it with 35 star originals coming this year it would make sense for them to do it you know things like you know maybe possibly like Grey's Anatomy could end up becoming a star original if it doesn't go to Sky because it's not on there yet um, who knows but we do know we've got at least three star originals there's gonna be 35 this year so there's gonna be a lot of stuff to watch the random movie fan asks why does Disney Plus use a different rating system in Europe excluding Germany and Netherlands 0 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus um, and he notes that he's from the US well obviously every country has its own unique different system down in Australia they have a different one than here in the UK 
And I think it's just because of the different boards that have come on, because you've got to think that a lot of this stuff was built decades and decades ago when movies and TVs were first coming out, and they've slowly introduced more. I mean, I remember 12A wasn't a thing here in the UK until um, I was much older, and yeah, so that's, every country is just, you know, you're talking about this, we're going back decades, and now rebranding everything. I'm going to be honest, the US system makes no sense to me of how they do it. There doesn't seem to be anything in between, kind of like for adults and like PG-13, there's a kind of a big gap. We at least have like a 15, and like I said, Europe have like a 16. So you kind of have something in the middle. Um, I mean, on TV, they have a TV-14 in the US, so they kind of have something, but personally to me, like R-rated sounds different. You know, we have 18 plus, and then 15, as you said, um, Europe have a different system, whereas down in Australia, they have MA for mature. So there's a lot of different things on there. Um, it's like the MA, you know, you've got things like the Wolverine that would class under that. It's all very strange. As far as like for us over now with Star coming in, kind of all of that kind of disappears. While you're going to have to have that rating in there, it's down on parents to make sure that they check it. Obviously, if they've unlocked the mature content, but it's very much down to it. There was a big story this past weekend over here in the UK of Disney pulling some shows like you can't watch Moana if you're on the kids' account because it's a PG. You know, things like that. You know, essentially, it's just regional differences going back decades. The random movie fan also asked, do you think that Bob's Burgers movie will come to Disney Plus instead of theatres? This past week, Bob's Burger was removed from the release schedule, and apparently the creators want to hold it back as long as they need to until it can come to cinemas, because essentially they're already a TV show. They've made all this big effort to turn it into this big elaborate movie that we see in cinemas and they want that experience they don't want it going to streaming because it kind of loses all that i mean i remember when i went and saw like the simpsons at the cinema it was so big and grand compared to the tv series and i'm guessing they kind of want to do something cinema and yeah it's it's very very tricky they it's all down to whether or not disney will want to but if they're happy to. I, I don't think it's a bad idea. So Red Raven asked whether or not Marvel sh um, should follow what Star Wars is doing in creating an anime series. I'd love them to do some anime stuff. I think it's um, an untapped market that Disney haven't really gone after too much. Crunchyroll is massive, obviously, around the world. There's so many franchises that I think could benefit from it. The, the first one that instantly jumps to mind, obviously, is Kingdom Hearts, a video game series that's been made in Japan. It's just ripe for the taking. It is so easy i don't think they are working on it but more of this would be great i've been a big fan of um, anime and manga and stuff for a long time so more would be best i really yeah can't say more i'd love to love them to do that martin asks do you think disney will make an agreement with sony to get the spider-man movies on paramount and the same situation with indiana jones this question comes up a lot um, I wouldn't put it past any other companies to do deals with to get access to those movies, either the licensing to them or maybe even co licensing them. You know, I could see like Paramount, you know, they might go, yeah, you can have Indiana Jones and pay us for it, but we get it as well and you get it, they could share it. Or Sony is definitely in that position right now where they're just selling off anything to the highest bidder. And if they're doing the deal with Sony, that could be part of, you know, what they're doing with the Marvel movies and stuff and go, well, well can we have them as well? I definitely think something could happen, it's just they've got to make it work. Chris asked, with the great addition of the original Muppet Show next month on Disney+, Plus, any word on more episodes of Muppets Now? Personally, I haven't heard anything more about Muppets Now. I have got a theory that they have actually maybe filmed more episodes than were released last year, because they only released six episodes. I have a feeling that they might have split the season into more into more like they did with Big Fib and Earth to Ned and maybe we'll get them at some point this spring because I can't help but feel like like last summer they maybe like went right we're going to split everything down spread everything out in case we aren't filming so I wouldn't be at all surprised if we saw some more of Muppets now that they filmed last year I also think yeah there's no reason why they wouldn't it depends on the ratings if people didn't watch it then that's the big issue. I'm hoping they do do something with it because the Muppets are, it's going to be so much easier to, to use and so much cheaper for them to make. I, there's going to be more of it. Whether or not that's the right platform for them, I don't know. I still just think a new Muppet show probably is the best thing. Just, just keep it simple. Muppets now and all the rest of it. I did like parts of it, but I, they could have done with more characters. The Juice asked, where do you guys see Disney Plus go in the next year? Obviously, we are getting quite a few Marvel content, Marvels and series. 
Given what we know so far, do you want to see more diverse content scattering throughout the platform, more original series and movies while giving us more voted content? We have to be getting close to the near the bottom of the vote content. What more could we get in the next year? With regard to what's coming up in the next year, I don't know if you mean this year or if you mean next year. It kind of feels a little bit too early to be talking about 2022's lineup, but obviously they are working on it. They just need more. They need to be that big hit to go after Netflix to keep those subscribers coming in and to become a legitimate streaming service. I think for long term, they're going to have to keep hitting more at the park. At the minute, One Division is fantastic. Great having it. But like this past week, you know, when you see this screenshot of what they've announced, what they've come out, and it was like Wild Uganda, uh, Pixar shorts and then the WandaVision is just not enough and um, they're going to need much more than that much more variety and more often I do think the weekly drop does help that you know when we start getting like the Mighty Ducks and High School Musical and the Big Shot dropping in and then we're going to start getting maybe some more animated stuff I do still think adding some National Geographic and the Disney Channel stuff weekly on Friday you know with new episodes dropping in so when you're seeing it it's done feel like you're getting choice. You know, you're getting eight to nine to ten things a week. You think back to when Disney Plus launched and we had six or seven series each dropping each week along with the library content. That's kind of dropped and we've been, I mean, to be honest, you look at January, uh, you know, it's been a bit lax other than WandaVision. The other Disney Plus originals, I mean, Marvel Legends, I don't really even count that. Um, the popcorn ones are great, but it's not a lot. Um, and then you look at February and it's like, well, we've got One Division and Flora and Ulysses, everything, that's it. You know, I, I just feel like we need a lot more than that. And it's all going to be coming later on. For us here in the UK and in other areas, we're going to be getting all these star originals. So that really changes it for me because it's not just all the Marvel stuff. I've got 35 original series dropping this year. That's pretty much only one every week or every two weeks. That's going to be a big difference. Um, so for me, by the end of the year, I'm going to be like, well, we've had this many original shows that you can only watch on Disney+. Plus. They just need more of it. We need, I would say, you know, we need more than one show dropping a week. And yeah, that's what I would like to see. There's a lot more content they can add, but they've got to get this. I do think they're missing a trick by not using their TV channel content better than just dropping episode, you know, dropping a whole of a, a, a year old show a year, you know, a year later is just not good enough. I think they need to be doing more. That's my one thing I think they need to do. Gavin asks, with CBS Access officially becoming Paramount Plus on March the 4th, Viacom at CBS has also announced his investors call. For the 24th of February to discuss Paramount further, what sort of additional announcements do you see happening? More international markets being confirmed. Do you think that date is no coincidence to try and take some of the spotlight away from Disney Plus star launching on the 23rd? As far as Star goes, I don't think it's got anything to do with that at all. I think it's just, you know, everyone, every company's got to hold it. And it's just, it's the dates, the ways they've come in. I think it makes more, it's probably more about their financial reports of how they're doing it. Than it. Star's got nothing to do with it because, you know, if they're launching in the US, that's what they're focused on and it's not even an issue there. And most of the regions where uh, Paramount Plus is working, it's not even having Star, I think, other than maybe Australia at some point down the line in Canada. It's... Um, yeah, I don't think it's a big issue. As far as what they're going to be doing with Paramount Plus, again, they're going to have to come in strong. Um, CBS All Access has done a great job of getting some stuff on there. But unfortunately, it's right down the, the bottom end of what they're doing. Is it's got a large amount of content. But we're in this thing right now of how many subscribers are they going to be able to get and how many are they going to be able to con continue to get. Because I think we're just going to end up going into a situation of more and more people are going to be churning, depending on what series you're dropping. And when if something that drops out, you drop in. Um, for example, like CBS All Access. I mean, I watched the Picard series on Amazon. That's where it was over here. I know it was on. And that's where they've got to watch how they do it. I do think the weekly episodes will help. But they just need to be coming in strong. Paramount has some great movie titles, but there's nothing out you know they're not releasing anything um they're going to need to come in with some serious serious heavy hitters and i still think that that streaming service is one that it could potentially be picked up at some point by one of the other one, big techs coming in to go right we want that because i don't know how many people are going to be able to subscribe to all of these different platforms there's going to be a limit and that one might be the one it's already been around for a while and i think the name is better but it's, it's going to be tough. Um, and it's not just for Paramount, for everyone. 
Thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure you go check us out over at whatsondisneyplus.com. Like, follow, and subscribe. Also, a huge thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and also on our YouTube channel memberships. And I shall see you guys in another video. Laters.